up, what up? It's DJ Drewski, High 97, the movement, heavy hitter DJs, and I am now rocking with allhiphop.com. You know the vibes. What's the worst? Your man Slop Shot, you're here at Times Square, One World Studios for allhiphop.com. And right now, I got the voice of the streets, you know, the air of the streets, should thank I say. You, thank you. You know, my man, so Drewski, what's going on, boss? What's up, Slops? Thanks for having me, man. No problem, no problem. How the heat treating you out there? Listen, I'm super white, right? So a little bit of sun, I start burning. Turn red. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I try to stay out of the sun, but mm. I'm just glad that we could be back outside. You know what I'm saying? New York City back open, so it feels good. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, man. Yo, um, all right, man. Yo, I have this is going. I have a long, I have a long fucking line of questions, man. Okay, because let's get I'll to be, it. yes, sir. Because I mean, you have been. Breaking, you have been one of the few people that are out front breaking records. You know, I said I could say one of the few people on your radio station that's breaking records. Mm -hmm. Funk Flex readily admitted, like I don't break records anymore. <laughs> right, right. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, um, how? What's the journey to this? How did we get here? Because um, I uh, shot to Chanel. She was on a panel. She said you guys were interning. Y'all got started off interning mm -hmm. at Hot 97 and shit like that. So yeah. from there to where you at now? Can you take us to that journey? Yeah, and I'll try to make it quick because it's it's definitely been a long journey. But mm -hmm. when I first started interning. It wasn't even for High 97. I was interning for DJ Cypher Sounds, mm -hmm. right? He just happened to work at High 97. Mm -hmm. But he was a DJ, you know, along with Flex and, and Enough and Mr. C that actually inspired me because before I even got on radio, you know, as a young DJ, you DJing in the hood, you're doing baby showers and, you know, block parties. But I used to hear these guys on the radio and they would play artists like 50 Cent, you know, play G Unit, play Dipset. And then I would go to a Funk Flex car show and then I'll see Joel Santana there. So I was like, oh, as a, as a fan, I would hear these people on the radio. These DJs was playing these artists. Then I could go touch them. Mm -hmm. So I, I always thought like the job of a DJ was to break and play new artists, especially from your town. Mm hmm um so i you know i do the whole intern thing with cypher he, he's bringing me to different buildings introducing me to different people i'm at mtv i'm at sirius xm i get like a board op job at sirius xm like you know just mm. engineering i'm doing that for cypher i'm doing that for angela Yee. she had her own show at the time mm. so now i learned that i never went to school for radio i'm just learning it as i go, go yeah. you know what i'm saying and and i get that experience mm. then i start shooting and editing video for cypher mm -hmm. They see it at High 97 and it's like, yo, Saif, who's doing all your stuff? He's like, that's my man Drewski. He DJs, but he also knows how to do this. So they hire me at High 97 to shoot and edit video. So that now that's like my first official paid job at High 97. Um, and just, you know, at the same time, I'm still going crazy outside DJing, building my name, building relationships. I'm at High 97. I start getting cool with the artists when they come up. Mm -hmm. Shout out to like Mano and Jim Jones. There was some of the early artists that embraced me and mm -hmm. just like, yo, I'll fuck with you. We can curse on you? Yeah. yeah we do, I'll yeah. fuck with you, Drewski. Like, and they just kept me around and I learned a lot. I started DJing for them, going on tours. And at the same time, just growing at High 97. But that thought of, yo, the DJ supposed to break artists from the town was always in my head. So when I finally got on radio... Mm -hmm. I start, yo, can I play these new artists? And at that time, the station's like, uh, people don't really care. Mm. Right now, Down South is winning. Let's just stick to the artists that are hot. I'm like, damn, there's no artists that we're really playing that these young kids could come and see at a Drewski show because mm. everybody's from Down South. They're all the lit artists. Mm -hmm. So eventually, things change at High 97, new management. I brought the idea back. They're like, yeah, if you want to take an hour out of the week and play new artists from New York, make sure it's the hot artists. I'm like, that's what we're going to do. And from there, artists like A Boogie, mm -hmm. you know, came through the new movement show. Pop Smoke, Five Year Foreign, Little TJ. Mm -hmm. We're talking like today's superstar artists mm -hmm. from New York City. You know, I'm the first one to play it, first one to do interviews, mm -hmm. and it's all documented. It's not just cap. It ain't up, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of DJs, they want to take credit for yeah. stuff. I don't even take I can credit. There's like 40, 50 people who took credit for Panda. <laughs> right, right, of course. <laughs> Shout out to my man Designer. At the time, mm -hmm. I'm on the radio. Yeah. I do the new at 2 a.m. My mm -hmm. co-host is Zana Ray. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Zana Ray. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's that's his right hand. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So we was always in tune early with a lot of stuff, and, mm -hmm. and because I'm I still DJ anywhere, mm -hmm. I get I get you know to hear things early. I meet artists early. At this point, you know, it now just comes, mm. you know. Coming. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure at right. this point, right now. Um, yo, all right then. So, like I said, so many questions. So one. 
is this um with this game? Is it just your ear, or is it like your um thing? Your pocket's being lined. Or like, how do you what, how do you know how do you pick what's next at this point? Nah, it's like your ear and just the momentum, the energy, and you know, I could hear a record and be like, yo, this shit is hard. Mm. Then I take that record mm. and I'll play it now. If it's super brand new, I just look at the reaction. I'm in, I'm in a position where I could take mm. music and go play it in front of a crowd. I'm getting booked, you know, six mm. days a week. So it's like mm. I test it, and then if I see a good reaction or if I see, you know, people know the song, that's even better. Mm. But if I see the artist is working and they just, you know, you see, okay, they could do their own show and sell out their own show. Mm. Even if it's 200 people, that means a lot. Mm. That was like with A Boogie. Like nobody was really jacking them until – I see he's could sell out BB Kings on their own. This is mm. high bridge. This is you know mm. before the A Boogie we knew and and they had the whole Bronx out there. And I'm like, this is before this my shit. Yes. Okay, because that's what I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so okay, so I was. But they, I'm that. saying they did they <laughs> ho- they did a whole show at BB Kings in Times Square, uh-huh. and had the whole high bridge out there, right? Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's from your town. That that's where it starts. Mm. But if you could sell that out as an independent artist, moving. Yeah, you deserve certain looks. Mm. So it's like. You know, and it, it could come different ways. Sometimes I have a lot of DJ friends, of course, so they'll say, "Yo, Drewski, we know, we know you play new music. Mm-hmm. This is the hottest kid in Queens right now. This is the hottest kid in Brooklyn right now." And and I get music that way sometimes. Mm-hmm. But it's just being in a mix that I feel like, out of a hundred artists I run into, one or two of them gonna pop. Yeah, for you know? fact. All right, then. So, um, how do you keep your air fresh? Cause you know, like you said, you started off with the Fifty Cents and the Jewels. I mean, now you, um, you break so many drill artists. Mm-hmm. And you know understand what I'm saying? And like to uh, like a, a older person, it might just sound the same. Right. All all drill records. How do you keep your ear new? How do you know, like, out of all the drill records, like, this is the next one that's going to pop, or this one can go worldwide? You, one is the reaction you see how the the, mm. the kids in the streets is reacting to it mm. um and what i start starting to see is like if i'm around an artist mm-hmm. say his little tj mm-hmm. i pay attention to what he's listening to mm. and i'm like yo who, like who's that mm. and he'll be like yo that's this this person i'm like mm. damn if artists is listening to this artist mm-hmm. that's kind of a sign like yo people you know what i'm saying like so it's just little things like that um i didn't even know like with pop smoke Mm-hmm. And Lil TJ said it in an interview, not even with me. He was telling, talking to Ebro, shout out to Ebro. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yo, the first time Lil TJ met me, mm-hmm. he was in the car with Pop Smoke. He didn't even know it was the Pop Smoke that we know today, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's just being around that energy mm-hmm. is when you start finding things and hearing things. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, that's that's what it is. It's just I, I try to stay in tune with the streets mm-hmm. and, and, go, and I'm outside like, People be like, yo, why are you going to the spot? Why are you there? The other day we was in in Brooklyn, and it's like they, they wouldn't even expect me to be in the spot. Mm-hmm. But it's like, yo, this is where it starts. It's the roots of like mm-hmm. where the music is gonna come from. The next artist might be in here. Like shout to Ron Suno, he he was in the spot too. He was performing. Mm-hmm. You know, he's from the Bronx, but like he's another artist that people were sleeping on. You know, all he does is Instagram, yeah, Instagram comedy, comedy, right? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's funny, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, he's funny, but he got. You know, he's a character, like, mm. he's an entertainer mm. that's going to eventually, you know, drift into the music and, and look at him now. Like, sign the Empire, things are moving. Mm-hmm. I introduced him and Ross Swish together for the first time, and now they got, they like, got, they got projects movie coming. coming out. Yeah, everything. <laughs> but, so, yeah. you know, just being around, mm. th- that energy is what, how I tap into it. Okay, got you. So, now, um, with, uh, with you, like, do you see you like breaking like records like forever or do you is there like a growth that you want to have like past this or do you like I love this level I love I love watching new cats you know coming to the yeah, game Yeah I actually enjoy it myself mm-hmm. I don't even do it for the art like oh I'll do it for the artist I actually enjoy mm-hmm. doing it and, and mm-hmm. seeing them succeed and and watching their their growth I've been blessed enough to, you know, make this a career for myself. So I'm not mad. I'm not, I can't complain. Mm. So, yeah, it's just like, yo, I'm going to ride it out. As, as long as I'm enjoying it, I'm cool. Like, mm-hmm. it, you know, it gets overwhelming. And then once you have a title like that, everybody wants to run down on you and give you their music. They expect you to turn their career into something. And, so, and I, I try to explain, like, yo, it's not just me. I can't do it on my own. It's not, I ain't, mm. it's not magic. Like, mm. You got to put in that work, too. So, so that's what I was going to ask you next. What is the process of working a dope record? Oh, uh, Listen, it's, it's up to the artist. It's different ways. But, like, mm-hmm. definitely, you know, use social media. Mm-hmm. That, that's your advantage right there. You can you can use that. Um, and just networking, building relationships. A lot of people are like, yo, Drewski, I just, I just fuck with you. I'm like, that's cool. And, and I, I take it as a compliment. But I want you to 
go tap in with every DJ. Like, like that, mm-hmm. you have to do that. Like, don't just try to be cool with one person. Like, mm-hmm. build relationships because a lot of it is relationships. Even when you get popping, you still need those relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, it's just like yo, you gotta just be consistent as an artist, especially new artists. Be consistent because mm-hmm. you can't just drop a record. Catch a little buzz and think, oh, I'm lit. Like you gotta stay consistent. I don't think you see that. I don't think you see somebody like catch a little buzz, oh, catch a little hundred thousand. They because they had a thousand followers, then the right. one song just end up like being the one right, right. that's at every local barbecue. And how often do they feel nah, like this it, is the work? It this happens. Is, yeah. Especially like I'll play something on the radio. I, there's times where I play the artist one time on the radio, and then they'll go catch like a little fifty thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollar record deal. Now they think they out of here. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. Mm-hmm. Like. Clearly, I heard the potential, so I supported it. So whoever's signing you, they kind of hear the same thing. But you can't expect, like, oh, you got a little $100,000 that you out of it. No, you still got to continue to put in work. That $100,000 is nothing. Like, mm. you know, you could, one piece of jewelry, you, mm. you're, that hundred and now, grand yeah, is facts. gone. So it's like, you know, and I get it. They get excited, and, and a lot of times it's artists that come from nothing. So when you have, you know, no money and then you catch a little check, you feel like you lit, but it's like it's a lot more, you know, I tell them, yo, take that money. Don't go buy jewelry. You're not at that point yet. Take that money. Invest it. Go do YouTube ads. Go do TikTok campaigns. Mm. Keep pushing your music because no one's going to care like you care. Oh, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. So I, that's, that's another thing. Um, How do you sustain this? I've seen a lot come and go now. It seems like it's happening at a way quicker rate. Now that people, now that there's no, it's, it's, the gatekeepers aren't as important as they used to be, right? Right. A lot of like one hit wonders can sneak into the game now. You get what I'm saying? And I don't see a lot of like people like sustaining like longevity in their right, careers. Right. How do you sustain it after you get signed? I don't, listen, I, don't, I can't <laughs> tell you what to do with your career. You know what I'm saying? But you got to, one, continue to make good music. Okay. If the music is good, that's half the battle, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And then just having the right team around you, the right mm-hmm. people in your corner that's going to continue to support, have mm-hmm. a plan. Mm-hmm. A lot of times artists, they don't have a plan. they just like, yo, I'm going to drop music, I'm going to get lit, and that's it. Mm-hmm. It's like, nah, you got to have a plan in place. You're you going up mm-hmm. against millions of artists. Like, mm-hmm. me even, you know, just just say locally, not even artists from out of town. Mm-hmm. Every day I'm getting hundreds of records mm-hmm. from different artists. So, like, you got to understand you're competing with a lot. So you just got to stay consistent and and create good music mm. don't get caught up in the hype like you might catch a little buzz it's like yo but just keep making good music don't don't let the lifestyle mm. you know ruin it got you all right then um so now with the um thing you like you said you started off with like a lot of new york artists and i think like now a lot of legacy acts are now finding their way around the music business where they don't need that number one billboard smash right. to sustain or have like a great career you get, i think jim jones is the perfect example of that right you get what i'm saying like um if you're not tuned in to jim jones then you'll never know jim jones right now is mm-hmm. one of the most consistent dopest artists out right now which is the weirdest right, shit right, in the world right. if you were to ask me back when i was but in high he's school, consistent yeah. like he's consistent he's and tapped good. into <laughs> the streets <laughs> he, he works with like artists it don't matter who it is like mm-hmm. And that's how you stay relevant. That's how you mm. stay consistent. Like he don't care if you're the the hottest artist in the city. Mm. If he just you know loves your energy, your work ethic, he's gonna rock with you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He just did a whole deal with, I believe it was um, E1, mm. where he signed like shout out to my man Dice oh, Peso. The new Bird gang. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The, the Bird Gang, and then he's signing all these Key artists. Streets. Yeah, shout out to Far just, Rock. It's just keeping him, mm. you know, consistent whether it's music or fashion like he just knows how to stay consistent that's a fact that, so because that's what i'm wanting to know like um all right so i seen it work for older artists right can younger artists build a buzz and stay on like can stay on that level and like facilitate like feeding their family like just through like the internet type of buzz yeah i, I feel like they could because mm-hmm. if they can continue doing shows and mm-hmm. you don't have to do fifty thousand dollar sold out concerts if you even if you're doing a little thousand a thousand person venues mm-hmm. and you can do tours every year you know, shout out to, like, Rich the Kid. I feel like he has the formula where he don't, you know, he's Rich the Kid, he's lit, but I feel like he's going to sustain for a minute because he signs other artists. Mm-hmm. He has, you know, Rich Forever, and he puts these young artists on, and he can do shows. He could piggyback off of their energy. Mm-hmm. And he comes from that era, mm-hmm. like you were talking about, but I feel like he has a formula where he can, you know, stretch it out for a long time. That's a fact. All right, then. Um, all right, so a lot of this music, um, me being from Brooklyn, I know for a fact a lot of this comes with, like, politics and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking, like, street politics. Right, right, of course. How do you separate yourself from, like, I'm just playing the music. Bro. Oh, yeah, nah. Like, I tell them straight from the, <laughs> listen, I'm not Cho, I'm not Woo, I'm not Crip, I'm not Blood, none of that. Mm. I support 
whoever's doing their thing. Mm-hmm. And I think if you just if you're honest with anyone, no matter what it's gang, street, whatever, just mm-hmm. in general, if you just honest, mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about nothing, right? Mm-hmm. They'll they'll tell me like, yo, Trusky, stop playing the ops. Yeah. Like, you know, and I'm like, yo, don't put me in your your bullshit. Yeah. Because what I'm trying to do and what I want you to do is bigger than Mm. Just the street shit, like, mm-hmm. and then you know they, they understand. Like, once you get to a certain level, even like when, with Pop Smoke, mm. he was super smart, mm. right? He he knew it worked for the music. Mm. He knew the kids was into that whole drama, and mm. so he played off of it the whole woo stuff. But he was smart enough to know, like, yo, it's bigger than just mm. some Brooklyn street stuff. Like, mm. we're gonna turn this into a lifestyle. And mm. you've seen how he did. It. You got everyone running around throwing up woo. Yeah. And, you know, shout out to Rod Swish. Oh, right. just but interviewed but him. if you go to you yeah. from Brooklyn, but if you go into Brooklyn, if you take these little kids from Michigan as throwing up woo, they would. Not. They don't even like <laughs> Brooklyn has their own debate that the woo started in Brownsville. They didn't start, so it's like it's so much deeper. But if if you just use it f- for the entertainment purposes, like like mm. you know, Pop did. It, it's not as serious as, as we as know we it, it to be, be. right? Yeah, I, which is which is um where um because I remember like I it got connected to me like how it started because I was we was outside when it like first started like in the Browns when I like the you from the Ville no I'm from Best Stop okay we, from um my man um he worked at a daycare in Brownsville okay and I remember like when like they had first caught like um a big Rico charge just like ten years ago and they were right, right. a different name and then when we found out like Wu was an abbreviation of that you know what I'm saying right like, right it, and we was like. Wow, like right, right. I'm proud of what these kids have turned this into. Right. You get what I'm saying? And um I always big them up for the artistry in it. The artistry mm-hmm. and like finding like finding a voice and then turning it into like a million views like without any help. You right, understand right. what I'm saying? And so that's the situation I try to like um I try to like be like very fair in it because I do believe a lot of the um what you call a lot of show rappers do feel like they don't get their shake because like you know, the was on the radio right, right, time right. and stuff like that. But you know, I just um I just like to see like what they what they're making from all of this yeah, type yeah. of things. And um Bob Smoke brought it to another level. Yeah, out, out of here. It's like my my situation is um I do believe like there's a new generation being ushered in. Shout out to like um Busy Banks and stuff like that. Uh-huh. I do believe two six AR. Yeah, boom, twenty six. He's um they're spearhead spearheading the next generation mm-hmm. of it. But I don't see it. Um, but I haven't seen it be as like big as it was like maybe like three four years ago. Right, right. To you, what's your um thing? Do you believe like this music has that music has a future in it, or do you believe like eventually like it? No, yeah, I, I think eventually like most you know m- you know sounds it changes right. Uh-huh. Um, pop was made it so big mm. so quick, and then you know unfortunately we lost them. So I think people are confused to like. Who who owns it? Who whose sound is it? Right, everyone said, "Oh, it's Pop Smoke sound." Even though there was artists doing it mm. before him, mm. and then you know we have Fabio who mm. kind of like held that torch and, and kept it going. But I I, I still think it has life. Mm. There hasn't been that many number one Billboard hit drill records besides Pop Smoke. Mm. So it's like it, it's not burnt out yet. It's mm. not like oh, it's a sound that burnt out so i I definitely feel like it has life because it's still new Mm -hmm. for us Mm -hmm. we was there when it started Mm -hmm. for people outside of new york you go to the west coast they don't know a lot of the the, the records we know right Mm -hmm. they know the big the big records so i I still feel like it has life Mm -hmm. but i think it'll start you know changing and and even the artists want to show yo i'm I'm bigger than just drill music a Mm -hmm. lot of the the drill artists i speak to Mm -hmm. They even tap into different type of records. Shout out to Ross Swish, who right Working now, Trackmasters. right, that Trackmasters, is he's uh-huh. using Jay Z yeah. samples. You Facts, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, mm-hmm. and he can rap. Yes. So it's mm-hmm. like they want to show that side too. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. we come from this drill music, but we can do more. Um, one of the early kids, uh, Bambino, um, mm-hmm. you know, yes. he, mm-hmm. he, he's now doing like party records. Part, yes. So it's like, mm-hmm. we come from the drill, but eventually they're gonna evolve, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, over time, that's what will happen. Gotcha. All right then. So. <clears throat> when did you when did you first hear it did you think like it would become the cultural thing that it is now because it's it is right now it's new york music besides that and the a boogie sound those are right, the right. two i would say kind of define new york culture at this point in time. right right yeah so did you when you first heard it did you think it was a thing the the boogie the, the melodic sound uh-huh. i did uh-huh. and you know and it, and it came with the boogies the uh, TJ's. TJ, the J.I.'s, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So that sound, I was like, oh, this is going to be great, you mm-hmm. know? like, Because it, it could fit with what was happening before, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I already knew, like, oh, this sound is going to be big. The drill records, I was like, 
this might just stay local because you always have that sound of those artists that stay you know oh, local you know okay, what i'm saying okay. there's a lot of times like you have all music in Detroit, but then again that's blowing up now right, right, too. right yeah mm-hmm. now it's but mm-hmm. because the internet mm-hmm. right but i'm like i don't know how people are gonna react it sounds like the uk they were comparing it to chicago and i'm like chicago drill kind of stayed in chicago even mm-hmm. though chief keith you know brought it but it was like it's that's like they sound so mm-hmm. i thought like okay this is gonna be our new york sound mm-hmm. but the way pop did it you know what i'm saying and that team and steven victor and all of them that it just blew my mind to see how big it went mm-hmm. you know now you have artists all over the world wanting to work with brooklyn drill artists mm. uh, it's, it's just crazy it's weird. Yeah, that's weird to me like right, i said right. okay then so um so what's the um what you think is the future of new york um, is there like, do you see a new sound, or are we going to proceed with this one? Please, I'm tell- don't tell me we're going to go back to how it was in '05. Nah, nah, <laughs> <don't know> <laughs> I don't, don't want to go back there. <laughs> uh, it's so many. I think the energy is mm. so good in New York, mm. and that we have now the the younger generation see like, okay, there's still superstars coming out of here. So I feel like with when once they see that, they see the boogies, they see the TJ, it gets everyone motivated. So mm. I'm excited because now everyone wants to get to work. Mm-hmm. And not everyone wants to do drill music. Everyone wants to do their own sound, you know. Mm-hmm. So it brings some creativity to the city. Mm-hmm. It just brings good energy. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the next sound's going to be, mm-hmm. but I just know that the artists are super motivated. So w- when that's happening, you don't know what you're going to get, mm-hmm. but I just know we're going to, you know, mm-hmm. get New York and, and whatever the sound is, mm-hmm. is going to be relevant because these guys are excited. I see it all the time. They're so hungry. They're so motivated. Even the the guys that we feel are popping, mm. they still f- don't feel comfortable. They feel like, yo, we still got to go crazy for the for the town. Got you. All right, then, man. So um, I want to get back to you as a DJ, man. When you're um, thing, when you OT DJ, right, uh, what changes for you? Like, besides, like, when you, because I've seen you, I've seen you tear down stages right, right, right. before, but that's Tri-State area. You know, mm. I'm more like what you're going to play. You understand? We're from Tri-State. So, but when you're, when you're out of town, how does your set change? Oh, uh, just adjusting to, like, you know, whatever city I'm in or state mm. I'm in is like, mm. okay, what, you know, not everyone knows Busy Banks mm. in Atlanta. So, but who do they know? Like, what records are popping in? You you have your hit records, of course, but mm. then you have local records that will ring off. So, like, if I'm on, if I'm in Detroit, I'm going to play a lot of Sada Baby. I'm going to play 42 Doug. There's, like, artists like Little Mexico that people in New York don't know, but mm. got his thing going in Detroit. So, it's just really adapting to, like, that environment and just knowing music because, yeah, here in New York, Jersey, Connecticut, I know all the artists. I play all the young artists, but I also know bigger than that. I gotta know what's going on around the country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you always have your hit records that could work anywhere, mm-hmm. but then I try to like tap into like what's happening in in that city, and you know that that's always fun because it's a mm-hmm. challenge. Right. What's your favorite outside of New York? What's your favorite? Um, what music is? Um, what city is your favorite music coming from, or what area is your favorite music coming from? Um, it's hard because I feel like. I don't know. It's come Detroit right now to me has a a, a good sound, good I'm energy. Like, I'm I, loving Detroit right it, now. Well, Michigan, you know, Michigan in itself. Um, but I I feel like right now Detroit is good. Of course, Atlanta always has, mm. you know, the hot artists and the, the young boys that are going crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's and maybe not just a a town, but for me, shout out to Yo Gotti. I feel like what he's put together. CMG. Yeah, it's like amazing, and I and I rock with Gotti for a long time, and I posted the other day like, yo, I was in the studio with Gotti when he first brought like Black Youngster around, and Black Youngster was just a, a character, like how we <laughs> talked about Ron Suno, right? He in the studio, they like, going crazy, and I I got to meet him early on, and now to see like what they built with CMG and with Money Bag and, and with Black EST, Youngster, EST, yeah. so it's like mm-hmm. just that whole movement is very exciting to mm-hmm. me right now to watch them grow. Okay. Um, do you think they're the new Q- QC? They still got some work to do, but mm. they definitely on that, they, you know, that mm. projectory. Like, mm. that's the way they going because Gotti got everyone lit right now. For, for. All right, so um, you're still on Hot 97. What's the role of radio these days? Um, I feel like radio will take a record that might be trending, might be viral, you know, might, you know, start it from SoundCloud or, or you know, the Internet. But once I feel like it hits radio, it takes the artist to a whole different level. And I've I've seen it happen so many times. Like an artist like, yo, my record went viral. Yeah, it's cool. But then they go do a show and, and no one knows their records. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the regular average person. Like if you're not a music fan, you're probably not going to be in tune. If you're just a regular nine to five worker and you listen to radio in your car going to work, those records 
are what takes an artist to the next level. Mm-hmm. So now you st- you're doing like shows at SOBs mm-hmm. to now Madison Square Garden once you hit that that radio and your record's number one on radio. It's just a whole nother level. Okay, got you. Uh, so um, is it uh, is is there a shelf life? To radio, or is radio gonna be here forever? Nah, I feel like as long as it's free, it's in the car. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be here forever. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's free. You get, yeah. I mean, because a lot of people had an expiration date on TV or even the movies. Right. But still here. It's still, still here. It's a like a household movie. thing. Like, mm. you know, as long as cars keep putting radios in it, mm. you know what I'm saying? And and even with radio, like, even with Hot 97, they, they turn the, the YouTube into, like, a um, number one YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? From just interviews and music and just being a part of the culture. So even radio is learning how to adjust and, and keep their brands and, and what they do alive. But I feel like as long as it's in cars, people are going to tune in. Okay, got you. I mean, because I, I do believe that's a, um, that's a question, especially a lot of people when they figure out, like, I can't make money without it. But I do believe, like, there's still that purpose to it, right? Yeah. Okay, then... um. With the internet door, do you feel like it make that makes it easier to be to get on radio now? Do you feel like that it, it, that plays a role, or is it still mm-hmm. like, you know, like nah, this is it's still a right. Uh, I wouldn't say it makes it easier to mm-hmm. get on, but there's times where records, you know, will come through the internet mm-hmm. and it'll be a big record, and radio has no choice but to support it, right? Because you want to, as a radio station, as a brand, you want to still be a part of, you know, what's going on. So. There's times when that happens, but I think I've I've seen records go viral and never make it to radio. Mm-hmm. There's records as a DJ I play in the club and it could be the biggest record in the club and still don't like it's still not on our playlist. Like mm-hmm. so, because some things work for radio, mm-hmm. and and when you do play a record, it's tested. Mm-hmm. Every time a, a record is on the radio, people don't even know it. It's like a whole formula to it. So. On the back end, mm-hmm. they can see what song played, how long it played for, and then within that time, how many people tuned in or tuned out. Mm-hmm. So you might think, yo, this record is the biggest record in the club. Mm-hmm. But when it plays on radio, people tune out. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean it's the biggest record on the radio. So I think that's where people and artists get it confused. Like, yo, Drewski, I'm telling you, I got the hottest record. All right, we could try it, mm-hmm. but I could show you. On radio, it's not working. Not, oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? People, so you guys have numbers to back this up. It is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because people think radio plays Nah, numbers. it's not an opinion or, like, uh. a decision the boss makes. Mm. They, they can show you how long your record played for and then how many people tuned in and out. That's why sometimes people say, yo, I hear the same thing on the radio all the time. They play the same. Oh, sorry, that's my complaint. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like because those songs keep people in tune. Like, So why wouldn't you... Play the play okay. the same song. Uh, Cause I remember when Buy Your Drink came out, man. Every fifty. Od minutes, right? Od. <laughs> um, somebody um somebody asked me like um from DC. I was um interviewing. Shout out to the media press from DC. Um, he was like, yeah, I really like Pop Smoke. I heard, <laughs> didn't you? It was. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like, yeah. yeah. That what you know about love? Oh every yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time. Is, yeah. But listen, <laughs> as long as people keep listening, we you gonna, gonna keep, keep playing. playing it for a fact. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, then, man. Yo, so when did you know that Drewski was a brand? When did it hit you that, like, yo, I'm a brand within itself? I Once I certify something, like you said, it might not be out here, but it's a thing to have right. Drewski's name behind a record. Did um, Have you come to terms with that? And nah, when did you? I still don't even <laughs> look at it like that. Like, mm-hmm. I have, you know, artists, you know, they'll, they'll become successful and they shout me out and they do their interviews and I listen and they're like, yo, when Drewski played my record, it took it. Da-da. But I don't even, like, pay attention to it. I, I still feel like, as a DJ, that's our job. It, I don't know why it just always works out, when you know what I'm saying, <laughs> when I play it, but it's my job. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm doing what I do, mm. um, and I enjoy it, like I said. So I don't even care about the branding of it. I don't care about, the you know, what comes with it. Mm. It's just like, yo, I always felt, like, as a young boy, mm. when I first, you know, learned about DJing that, that's what we do. Mm. So I'm going to continue to do that and, and just, you know, it, I've been blessed to make a living off of it mm. and to help other people become multi-millionaires off of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, you know, it's, it's just, I guess, a gift I have and I want to use it for good. You know, I don't want to abuse it. Mm. I don't want people to take advantage of it because there's people that, you know, they, they just feel like, yo, if you if you play it, I'm going to get lit. Mm. Whatever. I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars play my song it's like nah your money if the song is not good it's, it's not there's no good. amount of money that could <laughs> do you know what i'm you, saying yeah. like yeah i can't so, do nothing for you <laughs> yeah it's like it's not even about that but <laughs> i don't know i don't even i don't overthink it i just keep rocking but i you know mm-hmm. i just dropped a, a whole album mm-hmm. all for relationships mm-hmm. like 
I didn't pay none of those artists. I didn't pay for no features. Mm. You know, shout out to the producers. We took care of the producers. Mm. But the artists, that's all love. That's like relationship. So that's mm. really what comes from it. Okay. You know, people are like, yo, well, you ain't, you know, you don't, they don't pay you once they get rich. I don't want their money. I just want to keep that relationship. For a fact. All right, let's get into the album. Yeah. When did you come up with the idea to do an album? I always wanted to do it. Mm. I just didn't have time or like I didn't have enough relationships. Mm. But, you know, during COVID, when we was all sitting down, I'm like, yo, this is the perfect time to, like, get this done. Because I was in the process of doing it. Um, when I really said, let's do it, the first record I did was a little TJ Pop Smoke record. Mm -hmm. It was called Mary Jane. And we get it done. And during the process of trying to get it cleared and putting it out, Pop Smoke passes away. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not putting it out. And my team is like, yo, put it out. I'm like, no, nah, I don't ever want it to look like we're capitalizing off of Pop Smoke's death. None of that. And um, so we didn't put it out, but then we they took the verse on Mary Jane and put it on the Woo record with 50 and Rowdy. Mm -hmm. So it still became like a number one record. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it might have done better than, you know, on the Woo than it did on, on Mary record. Jane. Yeah. So I just look at things like that. Like, yo, that's yeah, true shit, everything man. works yeah, the way it's supposed to. But that's what really kicked it off was that record with Pop and, and TJ. And then what I said, what did TJ say about that? I feel mommy asking about you not putting out the record. Nah, he didn't care. He okay. had so many records, records out. Pop smoke. Yeah, 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 TJ was going crazy. Okay. And then that, that same session we did, Mary Jane, we did Moose Swings. Mm. Same time. Oh, okay, okay. But I was like, yo, Mary Jane's more the party record. I'm the DJ. I'm going to take that one. I could keep the other one. Okay, okay. Um, but they has they had records out already, so it, it didn't matter. But mm. that's what really like ignited it. Once I had that record, I was like, it's go time. And then we just started cooking up. And mm. the, the album starts off with an A Boogie, Trap Manny record. Mm. Um, Chef and Sleepy. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, you got you got um thing you ate and it correctly. Yes. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite joint? It's hard. It's so many different vibes. Like I don't know. I like the 2020 vision with Chef and Sleepy, but then I like the Ready record because it's a drill record and mm. it's Fabio Foreign, Sosa Geek, Fetty Luciano. Um, then I then I we was talking about Detroit. I got a record with Corey Ray and Sada Baby. Mm. Those are two like viral artists, and I put them together. Um. There's a Busy Banks, Maceo Guns record. Like, I just did that for people like you who are in tune. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's in tune. Nah, but the they mission. hear it, mm -hmm. and they go, oh, this joint is hard. And it's produced by Hitmaker. Mm -hmm. Shout out oh, to Young Bird. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've seen, I've seen Hitmaker working with Maceo. So I'm like to see what they got coming up. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, he's on Def Jam, I believe, right? Maceo? Yeah. I, I'm not even I sure what label, he's... but yeah. it was just like, yo, I'm going to put some artists like that. I got artists like Mr. Chicken from Jersey on it. You know what I'm he's saying? From Jersey. Jersey Cause, City. Okay, because Forever was my shit. And oh, yeah, I yeah. see the video on the projects. I'm like, yo, that kind of looked like, I'm thinking that's like um, Guanas or something. like South Right, right, right. He's from Jersey. He's from Jersey, but put me on. he was in Brooklyn a lot. So and a lot of times yeah, people get Gowanus. thinking he's yeah. from, from Brooklyn because okay, okay, he used okay. to be out in Brooklyn a lot, but he's from Jersey City. Okay, I got you. I got you. Nah, that Forever was my joint mm -hmm. for a little minute. All right, then. Um, So for the people that's not sure, let them know how they, um, the name of the album and how they can stream it and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. The name of the album is called CD at the table mm. um like i said it starts off with a boogie chef g sleepy mm. fabio sosa fetty mm. uh, malibu mitch designers on it it's, it's a but a lineup of like everyone we were just talking about um you could go download it go to my instagram at so drewski link is in my bio everything's up there super mm. easy so um do we take this to another level or do we keep it local i mean do you want to eventually like do it on college levels oh yeah of it? course but mm -hmm. I don't want to jump out the window. I'm patient, right? People mm. just, I see even like DJs, like, yo, Juice, can you put out an album? Help me put out mine. I'm like, you didn't put in no work. You don't <laughs> have no relationships. Skipping steps. Yeah, like, yeah. you just want to be lit. Of course, I want to take it to the Cali level, but mm. if I don't own my own backyard, mm. if I'm not putting on my own artists, what I look like going and getting a super big artist that I'm not even cool with and I'm just using the mm. Drewski High 97. Mm. Yo, I'm from High 97. I could play, like, mm. let, give me a record for you, for my album. Mm -hmm. And then we don't even have a relationship. It's, like, mm. not even organic. I'd rather build that's, mine. That's what so that's important to you, the, or yeah. the being it being organic. I feel like that can hurt me sometimes because mm. I try to be, like, super real mm. and, and being super real in this industry, nobody gives a, a you, you know what I'm saying? No, nobody gives no, a fuck, you know, right? You, they they you want know you to how, be fake. You know how I know? Because I didn't have to reintroduce myself to you. you ha yo, you was like, yeah, we yeah, never yeah, fought. I remember. I'm like, 
Yes, we definitely did at Cloud yeah. Nine, and that was on me. You understand what I'm saying? But most of the time, nine times out of ten, when it's just a, oh, what's going on, boss? Yeah, yeah I love your shit. Yeah, keep it going. You have to reintroduce yourself to that person, and for right. the fact that you remember me, that's always yeah, like the I'll, first I'll pay thing that people. To everything. Yeah, okay, okay. But it's like mm. you know how this industry is. Like people just so fake, and, and mm. so they don't even care if you real or not, right? They don't that's care. Up. They just want. The biggest product. But for me personally, mm-hmm. for me to, to sleep well at night and to walk outside <laughs> and I don't need security and I don't need, like, I just feel like being real is, is the way I take my approach. And I'd rather have an organic relationship and work with the artists and produce these records and, and put these albums together the way I feel comfortable doing it. Mm-hmm. Not just going and taking records from big artists and saying, look, I got a record with Lil Baby. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's cool, but I feel like people could read through that. Mm. And when it's not real, it's just not real, and, it, and it's just not for me. Got you. All right, then. So what do we do with if you um you get you put together a record with a, a local artist and you didn't like it? Do you tell them like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll be like, yo. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you turned down records? I just preached about being real. So, you know, like I, <laughs> so I'll be like, yo, like, yo, I don't know if this is going to work for my project. If you want to keep it. <laughs> You can put it on your <laughs> joint. Like, is it not going to work? This is, I don't really believe yeah, this one. Uh, have you, have, you've done that before. You've like, like, I'm talking like established artists, since you have given you records, you've done records with them, and you was like, this ain't um, really the one for me. Not not anyone super established, because I feel like at that point, if they super established, they doing me the favor. Okay. So okay. I respect it. Like, we doing, mm. um, but there's been artists where they, they, you know, they submitted music or mm. we worked on records together. Like, I was mm. there, and then later on, I go back and listen to them, like, Nah, I don't think it's gonna gotcha. gonna make it. This one ain't it. Um, right. but you know, it's it's respect. It's being honest, and it's mm. like, yo, we could go back and cook something else up. That's a fact. But uh, yeah, I'd rather be real than. <laughs> you know. All right, so you have um thing. You have your um reaction show on YouTube and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there, can you let the people know about that? Cause I'm pretty sure people want to submit their music all the time. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. How crazy. do people go about doing this? All right, so on Sunday nights on Hot 97, we got the new movement show, the radio show where we play. We were talking about breaking boogie and TJ mm. and all that. That's on the radio. Then Mondays we do the new movement live on like YouTube and the new movement.com. So if you're an artist that just want to submit your music to get reviewed, mm. I tell them, yo, just don't sit there and let us review your record. Screenshot, take the footage, post the footage, like use it for content. Mm. But they could just submit it at the new mvmt.com. It's spelled like that. Mvmt, <laughs> the new <laughs> movement.com. Okay, I got you. Um, so yo, man, I, can I? I want to. I want to listen to some of these new records that you get, man. I wanna, can I do it one time, man? What you want to do? I'll just react to some of these new records, man. Oh I yeah. Wanna, oh, you want to be a guest? Yeah, yeah. Oh I yeah, wanna, of course. Yeah, 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 hell yeah. I want to learn. I want to get because I'm. There's so much music, man, and I, I I like these young kids eating off of it, man. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I don't think the, cr- the criticism be constructive. I want to give constructive criticism. Right, I don't right. want these cats to quit their dreams, even if you are bad. No, you, keep practicing. Yeah, you know, but keep shooting in the gym. There's something to work on. The problem <laughs> is. Mm. With a lot of those shows, like review shows, yeah, and reactions, the, guests, the reactions, hmm. they just do it to be funny or like if they're yeah, to and shit so on that the shit artist. Comes out mean. Yeah. yeah, so then it could discourage your artist. I even tell them like, yo, if you if you just Simon of the group, like mm-hmm. if you want to talk, but at least explain to them why you feel that way. Like yeah. if you gonna be like, yo, your shit is trash. Yeah. Explain to them what's wrong with it. Yeah, yeah why yeah, you felt yeah, like yeah. it was trash. So Either that, yeah, of course, you're more than oh, welcome to I'll come up. I hope one of these young boys bust your head wide open right, right. <laughs> just for talking shit. See, that, that, can, yeah. that can happen too. Yeah, <laughs> that also is a thing. Because, like I said, um, think this is it's just like um, I'm like it's constructive enough. I mean, even though like some of these kids just do it just to be lit. Of course, you understand what I'm saying. But I would rather that than opposed to what they could be doing. You right, know right, what I'm right. saying. So if you got something to build on, and if you can't, like a lot, some of the things I don't see why y'all like it. But shit, if it's one of these young is getting money, man. If yeah, y'all like it, I'm I love all it. All for it. That's exactly. a fact, man. All right, man. So, um, can we usually do top five that or a lot, right? But mm. can I have your top five favorite DJs? My top five favorite DJs. Yes. Um, Kid Capri. Mm-hmm. Mr. C. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else? I'm trying to think because there's so many mm. for different reasons. Mm. Um, like Flex. Mm-hmm. He's just uh, all around like mm. superstar DJ. You do know what I'm saying? Do you ever inherit any of Flex's beefs? Flex nah, 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 we don't. Because <laughs> I just think once you get nah, the seven flag, <laughs> he, Flex holds it down for himself. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even a high ninety seven thing. It's just be it a just funk be flex. flex thing. Yeah. <laughs> be flex. Uh, who I got? Kid Capri, Funk Flex, Mr. C. Mm-hmm. Oh, who else? There's so many. Got the classics. Ooh. I gotta put Cipher because that's my, mm. my OG. You mm-hmm. know, that's my mentor. Mm-hmm. And then the, the last one is like a toss up. There's so many. Mm. Um, 
Are you? Are we're talking like technical. You just talking like brand wise. Because I mean, Khaled, like of course, overall, brand wise and drama. Like these guys, there's so many. If you look at my mixtape, uh, mm. mixtape, my album cover. Mm. The did you see? Yeah, but mm. if you read the plaques, it's all like DJs that inspire me on the production end, right? Because oh. people were getting confused. Like you don't have enough a cipher on your mm-hmm. album cover. I'm like, those are not my favorite DJs of all time. Those are like DJs that put out records. No. Who are some of them that was on there? Yeah, so you got uh, like Kid Capri, Tony Touch, Bruce, Bruce B, B, Khaled, Who Kid, Flex, Drama, Don Cannon, Clue, SNS, Ron G, Mr. C. Gotta have like, Ron yeah, G. Doo Wop, K Slay, mm-hmm. Absolute mm-hmm. Envy, Craig G, Green Lantern, DJ Screw, wow. Lazy K. You know, so the, those are, yeah, okay. And, and um, thing, and you said those are the ones like on the production side of it. Yeah, like DJs that I remember. When I was young, mm. putting out records, like mm. a DJ record. Before mm. even Khaled was doing yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, no. Like I said, um, Ron G to me was the first one. Right. That was the first one I was listening to. And then it was um then it was the um clue mixtapes. Right. So yeah, so I've um yeah, I get you what you I get like, I get where you was going with. People it. like, yo, you didn't put this person. Mm. like shout out to DJ Camillo, that's my guy. I'm I'm part of the heavy hitter DJ mm. crew. Yeah. So we are family. Like mm. of course those are all my guys, but mm. on the album cover, those was like DJs that put out records that mm-hmm. I remember like actual original songs not freestyles mm-hmm. not you know shout so the flex and yeah. team Bartwell joints I yeah them. shout out to <laughs> all the DJs <laughs> yeah. man that's, mm-hmm. that that do their job the right way you know what I'm yeah. saying and not for the clout and not for the money and not for the women like you really do it because you love it for a fact man that's, that's shout dope, out to man. you yo um, appreciate you this was yeah, dope of course. Man. insightful um, just any words of advice to anybody trying to get their record like um, I'm broken right now because there's somebody grinding and like I said right now you're the heir of it right so um, just any little piece of advice that they can use yeah one um, make good music mm-hmm. be consistent and, and build your relationships a lot of times these new artists they don't want to come out the house they don't want to talk to nobody they think they could just put it on SoundCloud or Spotify it's like yo you got to build your relationships you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying or have someone that represents you the right way do it mm-hmm. but it's just being you know consistent and patient mm-hmm. it's not going to happen overnight I know they get caught up they see like a record blow up mm-hmm. and they're like that should have been me mm-hmm. everyone's time you, you're going to get your time as long as you stay with it um, and you, you don't don't be scared to like reach out to someone like DJ Drewski. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. You only live once, so take your opportunities. But just be, you know, consistent and patient. And I feel like that's like the two things that they should really focus on. Got you. Hottest underground song right now. Um, in the city. Uh, Capella Gray. <laughs> Gallus. Life of Gallus. I knew he was going to be yeah, I told you. I that was the one. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, yes, yes. If you didn't I'm do right. that, I'd be like, I don't know about Juice. He's yeah, yeah, see? Off. Like, like, <laughs> now he's so. <sore. laughs> At the right. end of the whole interview, <laughs> now he believes that I'd really be outside. It's That's all good. That's a fact, man. I can't wait to go outside because I've been doing this song since March. Right. And then, like, to see, like, the... He got to go back and finish that song. A minute 45, that ain't doing it. For no, that's you. perfect for me. I like it because then I pull it up. Yo, pull up, pull up the tune. Pull up the tune and we run it back. Yeah, that's for a fact, man. Yo, if y'all haven't heard that one, yo, that's the one with that um thing at the back that has some sample. Yes. So it's amazing. Um, man, yo, let the people know how they get in touch with you. And Easy. let them know how they can stream your record. Uh, once again, plug At So Drewski on Instagram. S-O-D-R-E-W-S-K-I. You can stream it on all streaming platforms. Go to YouTube. Run up the videos. 2020 Vision with Chef G Sleepy Hollow. Water record with Dream Doll, Molly Brazy, and Ruby Rose. Uh, I got Neek Buck's video up there with Journey. It's called All of My Love. Uh, listen, we, we, we got more records to come. Free five year foreign because we got to get that video done too. Hot 97 yeah. on Mondays? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, Sundays? No. New at 2 a.m. Oh, okay. Weekdays, okay. overnight, every night. Every night. Saturdays, 3 to 7. Mm. And then Sundays, 11 p.m. Okay. The new the, movement. And the YouTube. The uh, live. Drewski, you just put in so Drewski to come up. For a fact, yo, slob shot your all hip hop dot com and um one world studios. Shout out the one that he's a DJ. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, um, sir. Yeah, that's how we got all this. You understand what I'm saying? Life of a DJ is not bad. I think I might start spinning records. I told like you, it's so. bigger. It's, it's big, <laughs> but it's bigger than just DJing. You see, you got to do more. You can't just think, yo, I'm gonna be lit in the clubs and that's it. Like, no, you got to do more and use your resources and all that. So, shout out to all the DJs that do more than just DJ. Yeah, that's facts. Mm. We out, man. Bow.